All new episodes. Next, a one-hour movie event. The tragic story behind America's most notorious unsolved crime. Getting away with murder. The John Bonet Ramsey story begins right now. The following program deals with a controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. The viewer is invited to make a judgment based on all available information. Although based on a true story, some individuals and events portrayed have been composited and or fictionalized for dramatic purposes.
911, now! in bed all night? Yes, yes, he slept right through it. He's still sleeping. <laughs> Did you hear any strange sounds during the night? No. No, nothing at all. idea who could have done this i haven't uh, the housekeeper asked for money recently she has money problems yes she would be the only one i could think of right off okay and mr ramsey do you have any enemies anyone who might resent you well officer i'm a businessman and in the course of business you do come into conflict with people but yeah excuse me Priscilla, thank you so much for coming. We got her as soon as we could, John. to be from some foreign group, and they're going to call here by 10. Are there any other kids? It's a nine-year-old boy, Burke. He's out staying with friends, and he's got two grown kids from a previous marriage. Oh, they're in Georgia. Why are all these people here? Family, friends, the elite of Boulder. Gotcha. You see any command officers? No, I sure don't. Okay. okay. You talk to the parents. I'll work the kids' room. Then I'm going back to headquarters. I've got to brief the brass. As of now, the rest of this house is off limits. This is Ramsey. Um, I'm Detective Linda Arndt from the Boulder Police Department. What 
color are your teeth? Arm & Hammer Advanced White Toothpaste. It'll safely whiten your teeth with just one tooth. Prove it to yourself with our exclusive whitening guide. You can go for... John Ramsey. No, Dennis, I'm going to have to call you back. There's something going on here. Yeah. Who could have done such a thing? Why would they do it? I don't know. We're trying to find out. I understand how tough this is, Mrs. Ramsey. I'm here to help. Patsy. Call me Patsy. people were at all times. Yeah, okay. As soon as you can, all right. search this house again from top to bottom. See if there's anything out of place. Anything unusual. Anything of John Bonet's you might have missed. And if you find anything, just leave it alone. Hey, John. Hmm? Look at that. Oh, no, I broke that last summer. I locked myself out. John? Don't let anyone in. They'll come 
911. Go call 911. Optimus home speakers are on sale now at Radio Shack. And with sound this real, they're sure to draw a crowd. Save 20 to 50% on bookshelf and floor speakers, subwoofers, home theater speakers, and more. Plus, big savings on Optimus VCRs, TVs, and audio components. Marty Cronin. <sighs> Not a bad Christmas, and you? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. It's heartbreaking. When I got the call a day after Jean Benet's murder, the story was still being reported on page 15. It had yet to grab the headlines. I was saddened and disturbed by the early details, but as a journalist, I knew I wanted the assignment. I left for Boulder right away. possible lead. In a storybook town that prides itself on both its isolation and perfection, the only murder of 1996 has created a stir, with the evidence pointing perhaps to one of Boulder's own. Uh, hello, my name is Marty Cronin, and I'd like to speak to Mr. Ramsey's lawyer. As soon as I reached Boulder, I started working the usual leads. Friends, neighbors, Detective city Zinger, officials. I do understand your reluctance to speak at this time, but... People were already taking sides, even though all that was known for certain was that a girl had been found dead in her parents' home. Early leaks in the tabloids offered sordid visions okay. of baby beauty queens and whispered rumors of sexual abuse. Bye -bye. The Ramseys had left Boulder for Atlanta, which they still considered their home, to bury Jean Benet. Their mysterious reluctance to talk with the Boulder police or anyone for that matter, only fanned the flames. Rarely have I felt so troubled in the early days of a story. But New Year's Day, everything changed. The Ramses appeared on national television and ignited a firestorm. The police said a couple of days ago, as a way of reassuring both residents, that there is no killer on the loose, that everything is under control. The killer is on absolute, the loose. Absolutely. I don't know who it is. I can't tell you if it's a man or a woman. But if you're a Boulder resident, I would keep... Keep your babies close to you. Someone is out there. That night, I received a call from a source deep within the investigation. 
a detective, nervous, but furious that the Ramsey statements would terrify the children of Boulder. He gave me the way in I needed. Sure, our people screwed up a few things that first day. We thought we had a kidnapping, not a homicide. I understand a lot of potential evidence was either contaminated or destroyed. You armchair experts. Look, lady, this is Boulder, Colorado. All right, it's not NYPD Blue. We don't do this every day. I'm not the enemy here. Well, how do I know that? How do I know you're not just another one of these bottom feeders? Detective, this is your dime. There must be a reason you called. I just want the public to know the truth. Was it the parents or an intruder? <laughs> Look, um... I, I gotta think about this. I got children of my own. I'll meet you anywhere, anytime. No, uh... Is it in any way conceivable that the Ramses could have been involved with their daughter's murder? Oh, God, no. John and Patsy Ramsey are two of the nicest people on the face of the earth. They could never harm their child. They're just your normal family. They go to church, take an active part in their children's lives. At Burke's school, Patsy once organized a science fair and she made sure that every kid got a ribbon. You know, with all this trash I'm seeing in the tabloids about John and Patsy, can you imagine what that is doing to Burke? And Jean Benet, they're making that little girl into a freak. She's just like any other little girl. Nobody wants to see that. so mad when I see these people leaping to these horrible conclusions. I'm going to write a book myself. Patsy's a great mother. Um, she had overcome such adversity. She did everything for her kids. <laughs> I understand the cancer was pretty serious. Oh, about as bad as it gets. Ovarian stage four. We thought we were going to lose her. <sighs> It was during that time, I think, that her relationship with John Bonet really blossomed. <laughs> Having that little angel around was so good for Patsy. So healing. Mommy, put some more chips in. Mommy, how many cookies will this make? Oh, uh, three dozen. Will they help you? Help me what? Will they help you grow your hair? <laughs> Everyone knows by now that Patsy was Miss West Virginia in 1977, and her sister Pam held the same title a few years later. So naturally, John Bonet wanted to follow in her mommy's footsteps. That's it. That's it. What is so unusual about that? If a father coaches his boy's baseball team, nobody thinks anything about that. She never could have killed that child. But I will say this, whoever did murder Jean Bonnet killed a future Miss America. Why are they doing all this? I told you, it's routine. Eliminating people. Right. Oh, God. Do you think I did this? Do you think I killed my baby? I didn't kill my baby! Shut up. 
whoever it was, whatever fine, upstanding citizen did this. They used a heavy object, maybe a flashlight. Smacked her upside the head, busted in eight inches of skull. Then, our hero finished her off by strangling her with a rope. A garrote from behind. Good God. Let's just pray she's already dead. How cold do you have to be to do something like that to a six-year-old? Why are you so convinced it's the Ramses? Well, <clears throat> for starters, we got this so-called ransom note. All right, you tell me. <clears throat> listen to this. Starts off, uh, Mr. Ramsey, listen carefully. We are a group of individuals that represent a small foreign faction. A foreign faction? It's crap. Go on. So, <clears throat> an intruder somehow gets into the house. He somehow grabs the kid from her room. No one hears her cry. Drags her to the basement. Kills her. And then he sits down. Hangs around for, oh, half hour, 45 minutes. Writing that? <laughs> Give me a break. Well, how do you know he didn't bring the note with him? Mrs. Ramsey, I'm sorry. But I need a sample of your handwriting. It's just routine. Uh, of course. Do you have something to write on? That's how we know that paper came from inside that house. But there was a broken window. In my opinion, you'd have to be a midget to fit in there. That's not necessarily incriminating. Is there anything else? Sure. Take your pick. The body had been wiped clean, redressed. The killer laid her favorite possession near the body. Meaning? Meaning whoever killed her cared a great deal about her. What was it? A doll? No. A teddy bear? Stuffed animal? Don't ask me this. Does it have anything to do with the beauty pageant? Maybe. Her crown? Damn it, move on to the next one. Okay. Sorry. Look, very few people know about this. If I tell you, it can be traced right back to me. This can't hurt you. My story won't run for months. You don't know when to quit, do you? Moms don't like to talk. In Boulder, I was shocked to learn, the county coroner's office sent its photographs to a local picture mat for developing. So it wasn't long before the tabloids were buying and publishing pictures of the crime scene and Jean Benet's autopsy, with headlines screaming, the Ramses did it. That's what prompted another lawman to call me. He was a detective the Boulder DA brought in for a Jean Benet task force. A guy who would normally never talk to a reporter. We can't be putting innocent people in prison now, can we? Things are not supposed to work that way in the United States. Where are you going with this? How about destroying innocent lives and reputations? They even accuse the little girl's brother. It's not what I'm about. I know you've been talking to someone in the Boulder PD. You should know they're on the wrong track. There's folks in that department who want the Ramses to be guilty. With their money and all that foolishness about beauty pageants, they're easy targets. Sound like their lawyer. I'm just an old policeman who believes you work the case, not your prejudices. Look. The Boulder cops are embarrassed. No humiliated. 
Well, they are mistakes that first day. They messed up big time. Now the whole world's watching. They need damage control. Well, are you suggesting they're trying to frame the Ramses? It's not something they're doing consciously. Look, they're cops. I'm a cop. Everyone makes mistakes. That poor guy who didn't look behind that door. Can you imagine what he'll think about for the rest of his life? But a child was missing, and there was urgency to his search. The command officers should have been all over that place from the second they got the kidnap report. So now they're trying to cover their butts? Time-honored custom? Sure, they've interviewed a lot of people. They've just about ruled out any theory of the crime except the one pointing to the Ramses. It's the worst sin an investigator can commit, locking himself into one theory of a crime. That way innocent people get convicted, and guilty people are left free to do it again. The Ramses couldn't have killed Jean Benet. Their behavior doesn't fit the profile of people who kill their children. No abuse, no drinking. None of the things you find associated with parents who murdered their children. None of this is evidence. What if I told you about a palm print on that wine cellar door, but no match to anyone? I'm listening. What if I told you about a shoe print near the body, a high-tech brand, no match to anyone? A pubic hair on her blanket, no match to anyone. Some DNA material under her fingernail which didn't match up to anyone. Unexplained pry marks on not one, but two doors. And you do remember that broken window, don't you? The window is too small for anyone to get in. Did you go and look at it yourself? That's what I thought. Someone told you wrong. I'm telling you, someone else was in that basement. The Ramses told police John Bonet claimed Santa had promised to pay her a special visit after Christmas. What are these, Santa? Well, sometimes uh, when I ride across the sky, my reindeer bump into stars. And these sparkles fall right. off and land in my whiskers. Isn't he wonderful? He always plays Santa at my Christmas party. <laughs> Tell me what you really think. The police looked into his background. 22 years before John Bonet's murder to the day. His own daughter was abducted by a sex criminal and forced to watch the violation of a friend. Yeah. Oh. Two years later, Santa's wife wrote a play about a young girl who's found murdered in her basement. Naturally, they were prime suspects. The Ramses had a Christmas open house. It was part of a tour sponsored by the Boulder Historical Society where wealthy people open up their home to the public. Maybe 2,000 people went through the Ramsey place. So anyone could have cased the place then. And the Ramseys made at least 20 duplicate house keys. The kids, the help, God knows who else. Three are still unaccounted for. Did your source tell you about the child photographer? Chambonet, show me that beautiful smile. Come on. His name is Randy Simons, out of Denver. Word is around the pageants. Take your child to Simon's. She'll score two ribbons higher. Beautiful. Prettiest little angel in all of Colorado. Some weird things happen around Simon's after the murder. First, he gets on the phone to folks in the pageant world all times of the day and night talking about John Bonet. It's like he's possessed. Then he does something really strange. Police found him wandering the streets, naked, babbling. I didn't do it. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill John Bonet. And there's other places to look. There's Jeff Merrick, a man with a grievance. Merrick worked for Ramsey. Good job, six figures. They were old friends going back to the 70s. Ramsey hired him in 93. But then a larger corporation bought up Ramsey's company. Although Ramsey stayed on as CEO, they let Merrick go. Merrick felt betrayed, but John thought it was just business. 
He claimed the company owed him close to $118,000, the amount later found in the ransom note. Why the hell didn't you tell me about these things? We cleared them. All three of them. At the very least, you could have mentioned them. Look, we ruled out a lot of people. The housekeeper, Ramsey's older kids. O.J. didn't do it either. So it's not just the Ramseys you're locked on to? <sighs> All right. We don't hold some big press conference to announce that someone didn't commit a crime. All right? Now, Mr. Santa Claus is an old man recovering from heart surgery. He could not have committed this crime. The other two had alibis, rock-solid alibis. We checked and double-checked, okay? This other guy you're talking to, he really believes that some intruder did it, huh? He thinks maybe a pedophile. Someone's stalking her. Case in point. A child molester in Georgia. Cops found him with a stash of photos of John Bonet. The creep described her as a pedophile's dream. I don't get this. You're supposed to be working for the prosecution. Haven't you heard a word I've said? Someone other than the Ramses killed that child. Listen to me. If it wasn't a pedophile, it was someone with a huge hatred for the Ramses. Someone brilliant. His plan was not just to kill the little girl. He wanted to pin it on the family. Or at least the everlasting suspicion of it. And he's getting away with this because no one's looking for him. So how did he pull it off? He comes to the party. Cases the house. Grabs a loose key. Christmas Day, he comes back. Watches the place. Sees the Ramses leave. He waits for dark. Then he lets himself in. Ramsey forgot to turn on the alarm. Then he just lies and wait. Not knowing when his moment will come. Finally, he hears the family come home. He waits until everyone is asleep. Then he creeps upstairs. And his is the last face John Binet ever sees. handwriting matches the writing of the ransom note 23 out of 26 characters. That seems beyond reasonable doubt. I don't know what your source was talking about. We speak in terms of characterizations, not characters. Things like style, punctuation, slant, letter formation, um, pressure. So it's not a sure thing. All I can tell you is that Mrs. Ramsey has not been eliminated as the writer of the note. But everyone else has. Yep, everybody else has. I hear uh, mixed opinions about the possibilities of ongoing sexual abuse of Jean Benet. But her own pediatrician, he examined her 27 times, and he never saw any evidence of it. Jean Benet had a problem with bedwetting. What's your opinion regarding that and violence against children? Well, that's not an area of my expertise, but I'm aware of several studies after infancy that the most common insider of violence against kids is anuresis. That's the medical term for bedwetting, so... Who knows? Statistically, only one child murder in 12 is committed by a stranger. That's why. I declined that request from the Ramsey legal team to profile and help identify the murderer of the child. Can you be more specific? 
This kidnapping was staged. I've never seen a child murder made to look like an abduction when it wasn't a family member who did it. There was a lot of unusual behavior on the part of the Ramses that day. And it wasn't just one thing, it was a pattern. Think about it. Their child, this princess they adore, she's been snatched by someone threatening to behead her. But John and Patsy, they barely talk to each other, much less comfort one another. His older daughter was killed in a car wreck a few years ago. Maybe he shut down emotionally. Oh, come on. Your kid gets taken, you're going to be all over those cops, wanting to know what you can do to help. 10 a.m. comes and goes. No one says anything. You know, it must have driven them nuts. Sitting around like that from 6 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon, going over and over their story, afraid to look at each other. Wondering if the other's going to crack, all the time knowing John Bonnet is lying dead 15 feet below them. And all the time wondering just when these cops are going to find her. Then, when the time finally comes for his big show, Ramsey, who's probably been awake all night and isn't thinking too clearly, he goes practically straight to the kid's body, where he contaminates any evidence beyond repair. Then, upstairs, John and Patsy have this outpouring of grief, which conveniently destroys our crime scene. Look, 35 minutes after Ramsey discovers the body, one of our guys overhears him on the phone talking to his pilot, arranging to fly the family back to Atlanta. But he wanted to protect them to arrange for Jean Benet's funeral. What's wrong with that? After 35 minutes? I'm sorry. But some of us would have liked it if they'd have stuck around, you know, maybe cooperated in the investigation of their daughter's murder. Your department threatened to hold her corpse hostage unless they consented to an interview. How would you feel? No. We only did that because they didn't cooperate. So, here we are. We haven't accused them of anything. They lawyer up, hire the most connected firm in Colorado, one week later... There they are, on television, playing victim. We are a deeply religious family, and this is not a possibility. If anyone knows anything, please, please help. For the safety of all of our children, we have to find out who did this. And we cannot go on until there is some answer. Why? It was her nightgown, wasn't it? Her favorite possession. I guess it was the one thing that gave her comfort. Now who but the Ramses could have known that? Jeff Goldblum, Independence Day, tomorrow on Fox. Tonight on Fox 8, hip could be deadly. Hear about the latest study on what cigar smoking can do to you. And some call it the best thing since sliced bread. See why your next PB&J could have a whole new look tonight on Fox 8. It's been over three years. The Boulder Police have interviewed scores of people sifted through more than a thousand pieces of evidence and considered numerous suspects. But a grand jury listened to 13 months of testimony, then declined to indict anyone. Investigators say the Ramses are still under an umbrella of suspicion. The Ramses maintain their innocence. My story's long since finished. As I'd hoped, it shed light into some dark places, but others remain obscured. I'm only one of many who sought the facts. But, as in any real-life mystery, facts alone have yet to reveal the truth. Maybe time will.
coming up.